Hello, and welcome to CRPS Contender, my complex regional pain syndrome education channel. Today we will be taking another step down our journal journey with When CRPS Spreads, examining the paper Spreading of Complex Regional Pain Syndrome, Not a Random Process, which was published February 18, 2011 in the Journal of Neural Transmissions by Rin et al. Hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. I probably didn't. I'm very sorry. I love your work. My apologies. Now, this is just a section of the abstract, not their entire abstract. CRPS generally remains restricted to one limb, but occasionally may spread to other limbs. Knowledge of the spreading pattern of CRPS may lead to hypotheses about underlying mechanisms, but to date little is known about this process. The objective is to study patterns of spread of CRPS from a first to a second limb and the factors associated with this process. 185 CRPS patients were retrospectively evaluated. 89 patients exhibited CRPS in multiple limbs. The hazard of spread of CRPS increases with the number of limbs affected. Compared to patients with CRPS in one limb, patients with CRPS in multiple limbs were on average seven years younger and more often had movement disorders. Spread is associated with a younger age at onset and a more severely affected phenotype. We argue that processes in the spinal cord as well as supraspinal changes are responsible for spontaneous spread in CRPS. Let's take a quick introduction. CRPS is characterized by a combination of sensory, autonomic, and motor disturbances and is usually preceded by a minor to severe physical trauma affecting that particular limb. CRPS usually remains restricted to one limb, but it can spread to other body parts, and this might happen more often than one would assume. CRPS in one limb may extend to another limb as a result of a new physical trauma to a previously unaffected limb, or because the syndrome spreads spontaneously. Although different causes of spontaneous spread have been proposed, the underlying mechanisms have not yet been determined. This study was done at a tertiary care center for CRPS, so they had a very large sample size of patients with spread that they were able to evaluate. If systemic factors underpin spontaneous spread, one would expect an indiscriminate pattern of spread. If cortical mechanisms, which is in the brain, underpin spontaneous spread, one would expect a pattern of spread on the same side of the body from like right arm to right leg. If spinal mechanisms in the spinal cord underpin spontaneous spread, one would expect a contralateral pattern, so from right leg to left leg, opposite sides of the body. Let's quickly go over their methods before we hop into their results. This study evaluated retrospectively, so looking backwards, 185 CRPS patients, including only those who had an initiating noxus event and excluding those with simultaneous onset or simultaneous spread. The evaluators recorded dates of onset, sensory features, autonomic features, movement disorders, the distance of time between the onset and the spread, and the presence and type of any sort of physical trauma. They categorized these patients into multiple groups. Initially, they did single CRPS of limited to a single limb and multiple CRPS where it had spread. In the multiple CRPS, they then broke it into spontaneous spread or spread due to a separate trauma. And then they also did it if it spread to the opposite side of the body, the same side of the body, or diagonally. During the assessment, 52% of patients only had a single limb affected whereas 48% of patients had multiple affected limbs. CRPS started in one limb in 88% of patients, simultaneously started in two limbs in 11% of patients, and a simultaneous start of all four limbs in 1% of patients, which was only 1%. Now let's quick jump into the results here. This slide is focusing on the spread from one to two limbs. CRPS spread to another limb in 78 of the 185 patients. The severity of CRPS symptoms in that second limb did not differ significantly from that of the first limb. CRPS spread from one limb to two limbs in 72 patients, according to the following patterns. 38 patients had contralateral spread, which was 53% of them. 38 patients, or 53%, had contralateral spread to the opposite side of the body. 23 patients, or 32%, had ipsilateral spread, which is on the same side of the body, and 11 patients, which is 15%, had a diagonal pattern of spreading. New trauma preceded the onset of CRPS in a second limb, 
in 37% of the patients with contralateral spread, in 44% of the patients with ipsilateral spread, and in 91% of the patients with diagonal spread, indicating that diagonal spreading is almost always associated with a new physical trauma. Spread occurred simultaneously from one limb to three limbs in five patients and from one limb to four limbs in one patient. Spontaneous spread versus spread after a separate trauma. In 38 patients who showed spontaneous spread from a first limb to a second limb, it spreading to the opposite side of the body occurred in 63% of patients. Spread on the same side of the body occurred in 34% of patients, and diagonal spread occurred in only one patient, which was 3%. In the 34 patients who showed spread after a separate trauma to a second limb, spread to the opposite side of the body occurred in 41% of patients, spread on the same side of the body occurred in 29%, and diagonal spread occurred in 29% as well. Patterns of spread were significantly different between patients with spontaneous spread versus spread after a separate trauma. However, patient characteristics, including symptom severity, did not differ significantly between spontaneous and separate trauma spreading. Patients in whom spreading occurred spontaneously showed a non-random pattern, so further analysis on this subgroup were performed. Characteristics of spontaneous spread. The median interval between the first limb and the second limb spread was 21 months for contralateral spread, 19 months for same side spread, and 10 months for diagonal spread. When compared to patients with a contralateral pattern of spread with a reference value of 1, if you transferred that to a percentage, that would be 100%. The hazard of same-sided spread was 0.44, or 44%, and the hazard of diagonal spread was 0.04, or 4%. The age at onset Sex or onset of symptoms in an arm or leg or left or right sidedness did not affect the hazard of spread. When compared to the presence of CRPS in one limb, the presence in two limbs increased the hazard of spread to a third limb by 2.19, 219%. CRPS in three limbs increased the hazard of spread to a fourth limb by 3.75, or 375%. The hazard of spread in patients with onset of CRPS in the left side was 1.46 compared to patients with right-sided onset, indicating a somewhat higher risk of spread when this patients had left-sided onset. Comparison of single and multiple CRPS patients. 96 patients with single CRPS were compared to 89 patients with multiple CRPS. Patients with multiple CRPS had longer disease duration and were significantly younger at onset. The differences in disease duration of patients with multiple CRPS were 6.7 years younger. There was no significant difference in the types of trauma between the groups. However, movement disorder was more common in those with multiple CRPS as opposed to single CRPS and was about 25% more prevalent. There was no difference between the groups of sensory symptoms. Patients with spontaneous spread had a shorter disease duration than those with secondary trauma-related spread but there were no other differences between the two groups. And finally, the discussion section of this paper. Our results show that CRPS usually affects one limb, but in some cases it spreads to another limb, most often in an opposite side of the body, 53%, or the same side of the body, 32%, and usually without secondary trauma. A diagonal pattern of spread was nearly always triggered by a new trauma. Spread after a second trauma followed no particular pattern, which strongly suggests that CRPS in one limb does not specifically predispose a particular other limb to CRPS, and it supports the idea that these patients have multiple CRPS, rather than CRPS of multiple limbs. Let's say that again. Supports the idea that patients have multiple CRPS, rather than CRPS of multiple limbs. Spontaneous spread to the contralateral limb was 2.3 times more likely than spread to the ipsilateral limb and 25 times more likely than diagonal spread. Patients with multiple CRPS more often exhibited movement disorders and also had a significantly younger age of onset than patients with single CRPS. The dominant patterns of spontaneous spread observed here strongly suggest that CRPS does not spread according to some systemic vulnerability, but is more likely to spread via spinally or cortically mediated mechanisms. Our study demonstrates that if CRPS develops spontaneously in more than one limb, there is a greater risk of spread to subsequent limbs without the requirement of a new trauma.
Well, let's talk some limitations and issues they had with this paper, as well as the conclusion. This study was a retrospective design, which is less accurate than prospective designs, and it may result in incomplete data, although such issues would seem unlikely to bias the result in one direction over another. Follow-up data were not available, and single CRPS patients had shorter disease duration than people with multiple CRPS, which does raise the possibility that some single CRPS patients would have ultimately developed multiple CRPS if they were left longer to find out. The authors addressed this issue by controlling for disease duration in their analysis. As it is likely that major traumas are better recalled than minor ones, the frequency of minor trauma may be underestimated. Wood could argue that patients may be incorrectly labeled as spontaneous spread. However, to address the objective of this study, we felt it best to use a clear definition of trauma, which was a soft tissue injury, a fracture, or a surgery, and that does not include microtraumata. Notably, this study was performed in a tertiary center for movement disorders, which may lead to an overrepresentation of patients with severe or multiple CRPS. However, the objective of this study was to evaluate the spread of symptoms and not the prevalence of multifocal CRPS. In conclusion, this study shows the spread of CRPS symptoms often occurs spontaneously and contralateral spread is twice as likely as ipsilateral spread, and diagonal spread is rare. The authors contend that these patterns of spread implicate spinal cord and or supraspinal mechanisms rather than systemic mechanisms, although further work is required to elucidate them in detail. If you would like to hear the version of this where I get a little bit more in depth, there will be a second video that is more comprehensive, but this does cover all of the core concepts here. So thank you for watching. If you'd like to see this paper for yourself, it will be linked in the description along with the notes I took and access to the slides. Uh, if you would like to contribute to my work that I'm doing here, I have a Patreon and a PayPal. Feel free to contribute if you're in a financially stable position to do so. I now have a website, crpscontender.com, if you want to check that out. Thank you very much to my patrons, Emily Malcontent and W4 Shep. I really appreciate your support. If you like what I'm doing here, please help me engage the algorithm. Like, comment, subscribe, or engage in some way to let YouTube know that you appreciate what I'm doing here and to boost this content to others who would also benefit. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you next time.